It's a good morning to you. Welcome to Asake Online. My name is Zenzel Ndebele, and this is the Breakfast Club, the show where we talk about current affairs, we talk about the issues that happen in our communities. And I know one of the issues that normally people talk about these days is the issue of fake news. I'm sure one of you, or all of us, have been a victim of fake news. We have forwarded something that we thought it was true, only to realize that it was not. Or you have seen a story, believed it, only to discover that it was not true. That is the tragedy of uh, social media, that every day you have to ask yourself when you see a story whether it's true or not, and whether to forward a friend or not. And the question is, how do we get our people to be aware of what is true and what is not true? And in a year where there is an election, like 2023, we'll be having an election in Zimbabwe, we tend to have a lot of news that is not true, especially with politics. People tend to be overexcited, there's a lot of propaganda, and there's a lot of stories that are circulated around, past as fact, but they're not true. And in the program today, I'll be talking to two academics. Uh, they are media uh, professionals, media lecturers, and also they train uh, in the media and literacy. Uh, training young people on how to identify fake news and how to train other people as well uh, to be uh, in, aware of fake news. And in my program, I have uh, Clayton Moyo and Peggy Zulu Chuma. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you, you Senzel. Uh, Peggy Zulu, I'll start with you. Uh, you are a, a media lecturer and a media professional. How serious is the issue of fake news? Fake news in Zimbabwe is something that is uh, so deep and wide. Uh, you realize that uh, each day uh, we see political parties who are now the major perpetrators and the major circulators of fake news spreading uh, false information, uh, deliberate, uh, which uh, we term uh, in terms of uh, in the field of fake news disinformation. They deliberately create fake messages to uh to 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 mislead our people so it's something that is uh gained deep roots and there is really need for people to to be worried about what is happening uh in terms of uh these messages that are circulating where you've got uh people deliberately sitting down and creating fake messages about their opponents uh, saying all sorts of things that are not uh, uh, that are not happening. So it's something that is uh, so serious, and is something that we really need to think deep and see, uh, find ways of trying to keep it. Thank you for for that. And and, and of course, uh, politicians or uh, political parties sometimes they are they are mostly in the forefront of uh, uh, spreading fake news. Clayton, besides the fact that people are maybe trying to gain viewers or you know, trying to you know, decampaign others. What are the motives of, of, of people spreading fake news? Yeah, that was an interesting question because uh, fake news varies. At times, is something as simple as mischief. Yeah. In the communities that we, we work with, you find, especially, say, in the rural areas, you find someone circulating news that are ah, uh, um, at, at a school, people are going to be given f food relief. Um, it's, it starts from something as simple as mischief. But what uh, Pegizuli is talking about, politically motivated um, misinformation and disinformation is one of the worries that um, we, we, we probably concern ourselves with because um, the consequences of, of that are deep. They, you know, they uh, go into issues of democracy. Um, they erode trust in institutions, and um, that's that's a worry. So, obviously, at that level, you have people who want to increase their police culture, or their chances in uh, in political offices. That's one of the things. At times, people think there is economic value of sorts. So, it's a combination of many things: political interests, personal interests, uh, and economic interests that make people uh, spread fake news. You know, I remember some, I think, two, three years ago when uh, KFC opened and someone deliberately said people were going to be employed and because they said they were not happy that people from Bulawayo uh, were not employed and thousands of people turned up. And, and at that particular time, people probably, some of them, you know, celebrated that uh, it was a tactic that worked. But 
how then now do we, as an ordinary person, how do they tell that uh, this is fake and this is not, uh, uh, this is real? Dealing with the, the practicalities of telling fake news is probably the most difficult thing for people because each time someone sends fake news, they look at the vulnerabilities of a society. What can be an effective bait for these people? And half the time we, we all fall for it because someone has thought about uh, what would be a sell. But um, one of the important things that we do uh, that we tell people is that your gut, first your gut. When you uh, encounter a message, you have to develop <laughs> the, 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 what do, do you call it, the, the questioning. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you have to be able to, to question the things that you, uh, you encounter. Um, formulating an, an opinion at the encounter, that point of encounter of a message, mustn't be something that is um, quick. You have to think about it. Um, but is, is this possible? Uh, moreover, you also have to check with other people. It is important to check with other people. If something is too good to be true, Zenzele, probably, you know, something that is, that is not there. The example that we are giving, I think we've seen a lot of that, especially here in Blah. I, I remember there was a time when, um, you remember the Eko Dini project that yet to materialize when it came about there was also a message that they're hiring and people went all out to uh, go and queue for jobs so there's someone who looks at a society and see that okay this is what people are interested in in this society people are not employed so if i uh, put a message that says you are going to get employed the, the job opportunity is going to be taken up like that so it is important for people, an ordinary person, to develop the skill of seeing, uh, of looking at a message and verifying, checking with the next person. But it is very difficult because even us as professionals, media professionals as well, journalists, you know people fall for uh, these fake messages. Yeah, I'll come back to you on that, where professionals also fall uh, on, or to fake news. But what is interesting is that there are things that have been circulated as true, and to the extent that society has accepted them. I know sometimes, you know, you always hear about the language of 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 the it became the gospel truth, and a lot of people now believe it. Babu uh, Chuma, you know, I know you guys are media trainers as well, training communities on the issue of uh, media literacy. Tell us about the Media Literacy Project. Okay, just before I go to the Media Literacy Project, I think there is something, one point that I would want to add to the question, uh, response Kate gave. Um, one other thing that uh, people should pay attention to is the source of information. Mm -hmm. He spoke about your gut feeling, but you also need to, uh, to, to, to just question the source. Who is the source of this information? Where is this information coming from? Many a times you see something that is just circulating without uh, any attribution to any attribution to anyone. It's forwarded on WhatsApp, it's they claiming that is coming from a certain media. I think that again should be used as a red flag to say Mbanumto or originator of this information. It gives you the idea. Then you are asking about uh, the media and information um, literacy project. We are involved in the, in the training of, um, of communities in terms of giving them the skills, knowledge on media literacy. So basically media and information literacy is about capacitating communities on how to use actually how to access, use, and share information. So mm. that's very important under this project because we realize that um, we are now in an, in, a, in an era where we rely on information so much. Anything that we consume is information. So people are able to send their information because of uh, the technologies, your WhatsApp, the phones, your internet. So because of that, there's a lot of information sharing that is happening among users, among communities. So this project is trying to capacitate communities on uh, how to use information in a, in a correct way, so to speak. They should know where to access correct, in, relevant information and accurate information. You're talking about fake news. So they need to know 
how to verify information. They need to know where to verify information. They need to know who to verify information with. And again, as they try to disseminate their own information um, uh, wherever in their communities, they also need to know how to send accurate information. How do I package my information in a way that is not going to mislead or that is going to be deemed as fake news? So generally, the project is about giving people skills, knowledge, and most importantly, the correct attitude of using information in a responsible manner. Clayton, I mean, you, you go in these communities where the, your, your, the media literacy trainers are training people. How do you, what, what would you say is the response of the communities when they, they get this uh, training? Nothing is as interesting as, as this project, Senzele, trust me, because um, people use these gadgets uh, almost in a, every community. Right, even places where you wouldn't expect people to be using WhatsApp, you you find it, um, and that makes the training very relevant. It means that the response of the people speak about their experiences when it comes to messages. Almost everyone in the room, wherever you are, has encountered fake news. Almost everyone has been misled in in one way or another. So whenever you are having a conversation with them, the the, the, the first thing that you do is to understand their experience uh, with this phenomenon. And you find that actually everyone thinks this is relevant because in some way in their life they have been, um, uh, they have encountered messages that mislead them. So there, there are many other things that we, we obviously focus on because I think has gone uh, through much of what we focus uh, on. Uh, we, we extend uh, to digital skills, Zenzele. Such things as, as digital security. Uh, you bring in a group of old ladies and they tell you that, ah, mm. you know, digital security is also another skill that, that, that we share. So this project looks at uh, quite a number of issues when we look, look at um, media and information literacy and issues of, of gadget use as well. Um, they brought out, the communities themselves are the ones who, who brought up the issue of cyberbullying, something that is very widespread. When you go to the communities and you talk to them about that, someone will tell you that oh, actually this is a problem. I encountered such and such a problem. And when people begin to, to discuss these, these issues, that's when you see that indeed communities experience this. And this project is, is, a, is a timely intervention. Yeah, you talk about uh, cyberbullying, but also there's one thing that is not talked about, which is very... You know, frequent. I finished and I thought it was amongst young people, but but we've been caught in between. You know, isn't it a porn where people, you know, end up sharing their nudes, a group in a church and, 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 and all those kind of things. And some of those things might lead to cyberbullying. Yeah. Because yes. then now um say how then do you do you interact with it? This is a this is a actually a, 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 an accurate um, example. I remember when I attended one of the meetings in Gwanda, uh Mame Kuma Guti a Watati phone Yomtanake. As they were checking our pictures Lomgake, they came across a porn. So yo into a twin sense guti ha so what is happening in terms of uh, ama catches that you give to Abantuan. Mm -hmm. So they were now debating and say, should we give Abantuan with ama catches or should we take away the catches? It's something that is useful, it's something that they, they feel like is now being abused. Now in terms of those issues, uh, this is information that is in your in your in your gadget mm -hmm. and it has to be protected. Uh, we have to be honest with ourselves, Senzele, that uh, uh, we have got so many uh, 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 things that are in our phones, uh, pictures, uh, sen sensitive information. So it's my personal uh, stuff, sensitive as it is. So this is what we talk about, that you should uh, uh, protect everything sensitive that is within your gadget, because it's a personal phone, it's a personal computer, it's a personal everything, but if you you know that there is something that you don't want people to uh, to to see. One thing that we have always conscientized our people: never share this information with anyone, no matter how much you trust that person. 
be it a friend, be it a girlfriend or whatever, never mm -hmm. share sensitive information because it can always be used in future by other people. That's mm -hmm. the first uh, line of defense. Never share with anyone. No matter what happens, no matter how long I'm going to be in the I mean, on, on, on that issue of, of uh, never sharing, so I'm saying people should never share sensitive information with them. Because one of the things that even our police are that to vouch for or would say is that uh, most of the issues of domestic violence the source is the phone. Yeah. Hey, I know you're not marriage counselors, but how do, how, how, do you, how do you deal with the issue of phones in a marriage? Um, for me, I would say a phone is a personal thing. Why would uh, I want to see what's inside a phone, maybe a partner? So I think uh, as, as, as people, we need to be honest, like I said, that uh, in as much as you know, we are maybe innocent, some people might say in some sensitive stuff, if you get phone in here, then by accident I see that sensitive information, maybe some note, pictures, or whatever, and then I'll start saying, where did this come where did this come from? So it's best that we keep our phones private and personal. Yeah, I think let's move from couple to couple. Yeah. We've had these conversations, especially in the communities. They actually drag where people uh, discuss this issue. It's obviously an interesting social issue. Uh, because it brings in issues of infidelity and stuff like that. And those are the things that people would love to talk about because they are very relevant. But um what we share is the principle that information has to be protected. You know better yourself whom you're protecting this information from. If there is information that you, have, you, want, you don't want your spouse to see, we, we teach you the skill of hiding that information. We tell you that if you don't want something to be seen by the next person, it is a good thing. This is what you do and this is what you, you avoid. That is as far as we can go. But when it comes to social dynamics between two people who are either married or dating and stuff like that, it's going to be you who are going to decide. All we can tell you is you want to protect, this is how you protect your information. Now, I, I wonder these days when people are doing marriage counseling, when they get to the issue of the phones. <laughs> what? Because it's, it's really an issue. But Upe touched on something, the issue of kids yeah. and, and gadgets. You know, we, we think that we, we are more better off, I wonder about they are in a better position if at, uh, at eight or seven they already carry a cell phone, they have a line, they are they're connected to Wi-Fi. But what are the dangers that we're exposing them to? <sighs> Kids and, and online safety is also an important issue. And um, of course, in the program, we conscientize parents about taking responsibility when it comes to, to gadgets. Um, there are things that you can do with your phone to make sure that your, your kid is protected. The sort of platforms that um, they, they visit. Of course, it also depends with the ages. Um, they are older kids, of course, who are obviously going to have ways of evading your, your surveillance. It's surveillance, actually. But it is important to that level that you have to, to be able to see what your, your kids are. Uh, you know, when they go to the internet, who, who do they talk to? I think this is important. All parents should do is You should know who your kid talks to. Um, because there are people who lure kids. Um, you know, they are, they are vulnerable to small things like a reward of sorts, you know, something that doesn't mean much. The kid may look at it and think, oh, okay, find it attractive. And when someone offers, when someone who's an older person offers them, they fall for it. And as a parent, um, you lose control of what is happening to your kid. And then you hear all these stories of abuses uh, where a kid was baited using um, the gadget. So we tell parents that it is important that you know what your kid is doing. I think that is, that is uh, the message that we send to people. Uh, Again, uh, before we move on, uh, the beauty about the project is also that um, young kids also attend. Mm -hmm. So when we, these trainings take place, we talk about uh, real life situations. We tell them that these are the consequences of doing APC. So we are talking about the dangers. There's a lot of cyberbullying, and most of them, they end up committing suicide. Yeah. It emanates from those things. So we discuss these things and show them real life examples that this is one person who was cyberbullied because uh, their note pictures were now circulating among their, their, their peers. So 
these are the dangers of uh, sharing information of, of, of doing this. So in as much as mm. parents are, are conscientized, but you also tell the kids that we need to be responsible with how we use uh, information and how we share information. I think the biggest problem, especially with the teenagers who are kind of grown up, you're 16, 17, 18, they're about, is the issue of interacting with people who are love interests and stuff like that. That is where they are vulnerable. And that is where our conversations usually focus on because, you know, they, they have these moments. I mean, they are at that stage in life where you can't avoid these things. And they, they really need to be told that, you know, it's fun, yes, but the there are times when the things change and that person whom you sent your images or whatever else that you sent to them becomes a point of your vulnerability. So you really need to take control of that aspect. Um, it's, it's good to, to actually, we are targeting it, the, the attitude here, that they should have this attitude of protecting themselves, of knowing that it is nice now, but it will never always be like that. So to avoid a situation where someone manipulates you, these are the things that you should, you know, always avoid when you're using your gadget. Yeah, so maybe at this point, uh, I would say this is the, uh, the project that is done with a uh, partnership between SITE and, 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 and Interlink and focusing mainly on, uh, I think, 18, we have about 18 hubs, is it, uh, across Matevale land. Uh, you know, and... It's election time, and Peggy uh, talked about the source. Yeah. Which source do we trust? That's a, that's a difficult question, which is why we say verifying, mm. checking with several sources is important. Because even, you know, even some of the mainstream, usually we say we want to trust the mainstream media. But they also mislead. And they don't mislead, at times they don't mislead in a, you know, just telling a lie. No, it's putting context, wrong context in a story, manipulating things such that facts and lies are all mixed up. You don't know what is happening. So uh, what we, we, we then um, encourage people is to always verify with, with multiple sources. Besides, they are also uh, aware of the context, they, they are aware of the media environment in this country. So we encourage them to create their own media, but also when in their consumption, of, of media, they should be able to see that if the story is presented in this way and that way, possibly something has gone wrong here. What has gone wrong? So we make people understand how mainstream media work. We also make, make them understand how social media work. These are important practical skills that when people have knowledge of, they can approach the media messages in a sober way. As media academics and mainly developing curriculums that end up they train journalists. And looking at the fast pace at which news is transforming itself, and now we're talking about misinformation, you're talking about deep fake, you're talking about fake news. Do you think our institutions are catching up with the way things are moving? Are we teaching our kids relevant stuff? In terms of uh, curriculum development, I would say uh, some of our institutions are really trying. But the major challenge is in terms of resources. Mm -hmm. Where you, you really struggle uh, to access maybe internet. Remember, we are talking about these things that are happening uh, on the internet. So you want to show your, 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 your students one or two things on the internet, then you have got limited internet. You want to show them uh, <coughs> things that are happening on social media they don't have catches themselves the institution doesn't have uh, the resources the computers uh, uh, for you to to do that so on paper yes we have got a, a, a curriculum that is um that is relevant to the current situation that is happening in terms of fake news and and, and stuff but resources are a major constraint in terms of really getting into the practical issues you end up uh, uh, doing it, it, these things at a theoretical level without necessarily uh, exposing the, 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 the trainees uh, to the practical nitty-gritties of what you're talking about. 
just a, a simple example you want to show them how to do an, a reverse image search there is no internet they don't have gadgets they are sharing a single like a computer someone is using uh, a phone that is not even connected to your wi-fi there is no wi-fi for them to do that so it becomes a challenge you end up telling them rather than showing and they don't get to experience what you are talking about so this is where we are now lagging behind uh, i think most institutions are suffering from the issues of resource there is knowledge there is um um I, they are ideas but in terms of um, resources that's so, so it's 2023 and we've been saying it's a year where people will be having elections Zimbabwe has elections and the, the, the country is polarized there's a lot of you know everyone else is on whatsapp yeah. sending something or receiving something how can people protect themselves right um this is another important because it's going to be problematic it's, it's uh, by the way it's not unique to to Zimbabwe, mm. every other country is, is uh, facing this problem. And this is where we come in with these interventions to try as much as we can uh, to make sure that people are aware of uh, their vulnerabilities when it comes to the information that is forwarded to them. You know, you share this skill. And when messages come through, you know, look out for you develop a criteria of sorts. Make sure that people have the gut feeling to, to actually develop opinions in a systematic way, in a way that they don't just you know, gobble up everything that they get and forward it to the, to the next person. I think this is going to be um, the biggest challenge with these elections, Zenzele. But um, I can assure you that in the communities that we have gone to, one of the things that we really encourage is uh, the access to the media that you have to have a wide range of access to the media, such that uh, when you get your message on WhatsApp, you've got something to cross-check with before you believe it. Uh, I think we'll end there on that note. And it is interesting that uh, about maybe 10 years ago, when it was election time, we were complaining about lack of information because there was no information and we rely on, you know, the state media and nothing else. But now we have a problem of information overload, which half of it is not true. And even those who are supposed to communicate true information or credible information, then tend to give us things that are not uh, uh, honest, that are not true, half-packed information. We are misled into many things because, and unfortunately, the ruling party is, is wants to see, to be seen to have fulfilled uh, their manifesto. So anything, if you see an anthill, uh, it was done by the current government in partnership with the ends. If you see this, so we, we are in a situation whereby anything that you see anyway was built by the new government. And you never know which was true or whether it's true or not. At the same time, the opposition is also trying to portray that they are a better opposition. So we challenges Pekwang Amanga, left, right and center. And it is a danger because there are some people who don't have the skill uh, to, to actually look and analyze what is true and what is not. So in a society where we have believers, where people are always cheated by our prophets, the Pume Church says that we are politicians. Imagine what kind of a world we are living in. And I can assure you, 2023 will be a very, very long year because it's a scandal among the church, scandal among our politicians, scandal among our social media. So this was what we were talking about today, the challenges of uh, fake news, but also looking at the Media and, liter uh, media and Information Literacy Project, which is uh, uh, implemented by SITE and, uh, and Interlink. And uh, I hope you have learned something and if also uh, want to us to share or you want to share with us your experiences with fake news and how you think you can solve uh, this issue, you are free to get in touch with us on Facebook, on, 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 on Twitter, on Instagram, on WhatsApp. My name is Zenzel Ndebele. Till you meet again in other programs, have a good day.